Welcome to TA Tech. So every year I compare every cloud gaming service to let you know which one you should buy. Let's get started. I'll compare the Xbox Gaming Pass from Microsoft, Boostroid from Boostroid, the Cloud Gaming Pass from Game Lovers, Nvidia GeForce Now from Nvidia, Loudplay from Loudplay Global Limited, and lastly, Joyar Cloud Gaming from Joyar. And my favorite one, Shadow, will not be included in this video because of the long waiting for the pre-orders. And the same goes for Stadia, for obvious reasons. So first, let's start with the prices. Here are the prices for all the services we're gonna compare in this video. But this does not tell the whole story. Firstly, the Xbox Game Pass, though it's the most expensive one, is the best value for money because all the games there are included and you don't have to pay them individually. As for the Cloud Gaming Pass, it gives you 40 hours of gameplay and you have to pay through the games individually so they're not free. As for Joyark, even though they have a deal for their Pro model, it's not the best one out there because it will finish in Black Friday. So the basic model will give you 40 hours of gameplay and you still have to pay for the games. As for GeForce Now, there is no limit on playing monthly, but there is only a limit of playing 6 hours a day, which is not really bad. And it is worth noting that they also offer a free version, which gives you 1 hour of gameplay a day. As for Boostroid, there is also no limit on the monthly gameplay or the daily gameplay. You still have to pay for the games when you play. As for loud play, I say it's the worst one here because it offers you only 20 hours a month for playing. That's less than an hour a day on their lower tier, so it's not really that good. So in this round, clearly the Xbox Gaming Pass is the best value for money here and it's the clear winner out of all of them. You can't play cloud gaming services without a decent controller. So I chose the GameSir X2 Pro thanks to our channel sponsor, BZ Future. The GameSir X2 Pro is by far the best cloud gaming controller out there. It is very comfortable in the hand and has a cooling system that will keep your phone cool while gaming. It connects to your phone via USB-C and stretches really wide and it could fit any phone that you have. Playing Halo with this controller was really a blast. It did take some getting used to while aiming, but it was really nice to play with. I did get some kills here and there and I got too used to the controller after all. So if you ask me which controller I recommend for cloud gaming services and even for FPS games, the GameSir X2 Pro is the one. If you want to get this controller at a discount, I left a link for it in the description below from BZ Future. Click on buy it now and click OK and then you can apply my discount code that would give you 20% off on this controller. Just type TA and then click apply and this will reduce the price of the controller by 20%. You'll be saving 16 bucks on this controller. Amazing. And just to let you know so you don't miss out, Busy Future is now holding a 50% discount for Black Friday. This will end on the 1st of December. Use the code shown on the website to get your 50% discount on selected products. Let's get back to our video. So now let's talk about ease of use. I'm using my Steam Deck here as a timer to measure how long it takes to get to the game from opening the app. So let's start with the Xbox Gaming app first. So let's see how long it takes the Xbox Gaming app to load the game. Let's go. The Xbox Game Pass is known to be very fast in loading games and this is exactly what happened here. The Xbox Game Pass loaded the game in only 12 seconds. It's remarkable. Next we have the Cloud Game Pass. It's very confusing I know, it's very close to the Xbox Game Pass. But let's get started here. The problem with this one is it has a queue and whenever you want to start a game, it tells you there are 70 or 80 people waiting to start the game. So this definitely takes you out of the competition because you can't predict the queue and how many people are there. So this gives you a zero mark in this category. Next we have Joyar Gaming. Let's see how long it takes to launch a game right from the start. Let's start the app and see how long it takes. And I'm gonna tell you from now, it's nowhere near the Xbox Game Pass because it's taking so long that I needed to fast the video times 8 and it's still taking long. It took a whole minute to get to the login screen of the game and it's still not done. You still need to log in to start the game. So for ease of use for this one, it's not really that great. And next we have GeForce Now, one of my favorite ones out there. Let's see how it does in the ease of access category. GeForce Now takes around 30 seconds to load the game and gets to the loading screen. You still have to log in but you can connect your account from outside the game and it will save it so you don't have to log in again. And next we have Boostroid. I have a soft spot for this app because it always flies under the radar but it's really really good. Let's see how long it takes to launch a game. It took only 28 seconds to get to the loading screen. Very good. And next we have Loudplay. Sometimes this app is really good and sometimes it's not that great. So let's see how long it takes to run the game. And this process did take long to launch your own PC because this app provides you with your own PC to play. This one minute and two seconds did not really get you to your game. You still have to run the game from the PC they provide and you're still not in the game. The game still needs to load so you're not quite there yet. So I don't really know how I feel about it to be honest. And it's also worth adding that sometimes the app does have some cues. It will say there are two or three players ahead of you. So yeah, ease of access in this app is not the best at all. And again, the Xbox Game Pass is the winner for this round. It runs the games really fast in around 30 seconds. 
So next we have stream quality. In this one, I'm going to show you what is the stream quality and the frame rates for each app. And if you can change those on demand. When going to the settings, this apparent the Xbox Game Pass does not allow you to change any streaming setting. It does like to take care of it on its own based on your connection. The Xbox Game Pass runs at 1080p 60fps quite consistently and it's really, really good. Now the Cloud Gaming Pass does allow you to change the streaming quality based on demand. So if you can see here, you can change to 3080p, 480p, 720p and 1080p, but does not let you change the frame rates. And I found that it does not run the 60 FPS, even though they advertise that it does. And next we have Joyarc and let's see what settings we can change with this one. So if you start a game and start playing, then you can customize your gameplay. With this one, there is not any settings to change the streaming services or the frame rate or how clear the stream is. So, so it's not the best to be honest. And next we have GeForce Now, which I'm really, really proud of the amount of customization there is. So if you go to the settings, you can change the server of where you're playing from. And then you can change the specific resolutions that you want to run the game at. It's quite amazing, even the aspect ratio. Then you can change the frame rates all the way to 120 Hertz if you have the VIP pass. And then you can change the bitrate as well, which is incredible. Well, gives you that feel when you have a PC and you can change a lot about it. I'm quite proud of this. Well done, Nvidia. Then we have Boostroid, which runs really well at 60 FPS, 1080p, sometimes drops to 720p. But there are no settings that you could change. Next, we have Loudplay, which runs at 1080p, 60 FPS, and you have some settings to change here. You can change the clarity, you can change the lag resilience, and also you can change the FPS from 60 or 30 if you want. I do like to see those because some people don't have really good internet and cannot play cloud gaming services at the top level. There is no doubt that the GeForce Now is the winner of this round. The Xbox Game Pass this time gets a 0.6 rating because it does not have any customization for your streaming. Next, let's talk about the most important thing about cloud gaming, which is games. And we can start with the Xbox Game Pass, which has a wide variety of games, especially some Xbox exclusives. It includes both Halo Infinite campaign on the multiplayer, has Mortal Kombat, has so many Xbox games such as Forza, Forza Horizon, Sea of Thieves, Flight Simulator, and so many more. And there are so many games to play, sometimes it's very hard to choose because the selection is really big. I went to all games sorted from A to Z and started scrolling and it took such a long time to scroll throughout the whole menu of games. It's quite remarkable how many games in the Xbox Game Pass and all of them are for free. There are more than 300 games in the Xbox Game Pass. Next we have the Cloud Gaming Pass and this one does have a good selection of its own. It is quite crazy because it has some PlayStation exclusives, it has Spider-Man, it has Red Dead Redemption, it has GTA V and has so many games to play. There is also Elden Ring in this one, it's a recent game, it's game of the year and it's still there. And all of this of course is really good but the free to play games are very minimal and there is no money to play so you have to pay for every game that you have to play and sadly there is no list of how many games there are so we're gonna have to deduct some points of this app. And there's Joyarc and right off the bat it tells you that it has more than 100 PC games that you can play which is really good. It's behind the Xbox Game Pass but it's actually very good. If you scroll down you'll see a lot of familiar games here. You can see GTA V, WWE, Spider-Man and there are so many other good games. Detroit Became Human, Red Dead Redemption and I have to say it's a very good selection of games so well done Joyarc. And then we have GeForce Now, it has a behemoth of a library of games. There is Apex Legends, Counter-Strike, Destiny, Rocket League, and there are so many other games. As you can see here, when I scroll down, there are so many familiar games that you can see. There is even Fortnite, and so many other good multiplayer games. As you can see here, there is even Cyberpunk, and Far Cry, and Dying Light. There are so many games that you can play with GeForce Now. So the selection of games at GeForce Now gets the full marks in this category. And if you want to know how many games there are, a quick Google search will show you there are 400 games in GeForce Now. It's quite crazy, well done. And then next we have Boostroid, and doesn't really fall so much behind Xbox Game Pass and GeForce Now. Has God of War, Spider-Man, Cyberpunk, and even has The Witcher, Destiny, and there are so many other games that you can play. The selection is really big, and I'm really impressed with this one. I don't really know how many games exactly there are, but you'll really be impressed with this selection. And lastly, we have Loudplay, and this one is quite different because it gives you your own PC, so you have limitless amount of games. Potentially, you can play any PC game that you want if you own that game, so it's quite impressive. So, for this category, the Xbox Game Pass takes the win, because all the games on the Xbox Game Pass you can play for free without paying for the actual games. And second, of course, comes GeForce Now, because it has 400 games in its library, and this is uncomparable. I was very impressed with every selection for all the apps I compared in this video.
So next, let's talk about the elephant in the room, latency. I could not really measure this as not all the apps show you the latency that they're providing. So I'm going to rate these apps based on personal experience from using the apps for a long time. So it's going to be bad, good and best. So the Xbox Game Pass goes in the best category because it's really consistent with the frame rates and the resolution. And the same goes for GeForce Now because you feel like you're playing a native game when you play with these apps. So next we have Boostroid. This one is going to be rated good because the latency is not so bad. Sometimes you do have some jittering, but the app is really consistent and you can really enjoy playing. And then we have Joyark and it's going to the bad side, unfortunately. I don't know if the servers are not close to me, but I experienced a lot of latency. I didn't really enjoy playing with this one. Then we have Loud Play, which will go to the good section because the latency is not bad and you can play consistently with some problems here and there. And last we have the Cloud Gaming Pass and unfortunately it's also going to stay in the bad section. There was a lot of latency for me. If they could reach out to me and explain why this is happening, uh, the app was really laggy at many points. Maybe the servers are far from me, but this is my rating for it. So both the Xbox Game Pass and GeForce Now get the full marks in this category. So lastly, I'm going to talk about something that is really important, which is compatibility. So which devices can run these apps and where you can play them. So let's go with the Xbox Gaming Pass and pretty much you can play this anywhere, even on a smart TV. So it gets a full mark in this category without any doubt. Next we have uh, Cloud Gaming Pass and it's only on Android. I didn't find it on iOS. Some people say it's there, but I didn't really find it. Then we have Joyark and it's on Android and iOS. As you can see here, it's on the App Store, so you can download it from there. And then we have GeForce Now, which loves to compete with the Xbox Game Pass because it runs on so many platforms. As you can see here, Mac OS, Android, Android TV, Android phones. And you can see, you can find it on Safari if you want to play on the iPhone, on LG TV, and, and maybe you can even run it on your fridge. Then you have Boostroid, which runs on Android phones, of course, because I have an Android phone. It runs on Windows 10 and also runs on Linux, which is it's quite surprising and then you have it running on Windows 7 as well. Unfortunately it's not on iPhone or iOS, Apple is really behind in adopting these cloud gaming services. And then we have Loud Play which runs on multiple platforms as well. A quick Google search will show you that it runs uh, on Android, it runs on Windows as well and you can find it on Mac OS but it's not on iPhone too. So this category of course goes to the Xbox Game Pass and GeForce Now and the winner is clearly Xbox Game Pass. It scored so many good points and I actually do enjoy playing with it. And second, we have GeForce Now. It's a really solid platform to play with and you will really enjoy using it. So there you have it. I compared every cloud gaming service that there are. So you know which one you should buy. Thank you so much for watching because I really appreciate it. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like the channel, subscribe and peace.